Welcome to the Content 10X Podcast, the show where content creators learn how to harness the power of content repurposing. And now, your host, Amy Woods. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Content 10X Podcast. I'm your host, Amy Wood, and this week it's all about content planning and I've got a fantastic guest on the show. So my guest is Janet Murray. She's a great friend of mine and I'm sure many of you know Janet already. She's been on the show before in episode 23. And now Janet is an expert in marketing. She's got a background as a journalist, having worked with many national newspapers, but over the past five years or so, She's built a highly successful blog, podcast, email list, a really big social media following, been featured in dozens of newspapers, magazines, radio, TV. She has a book. She's an international speaker and she helps people through her membership, her consulting. And she also has a media diary as well, which I have on my desk right here. So, Janet, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Amy. What did I miss? That was quite a big intro, actually, wasn't it? (laughs) Don't worry, it's fine. (laughs) (laughs) Don't think I missed anything. So how are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. So um, at the time of this recording, you've just finished your content live event, which was brilliant. Thank you again for having me there. It um, It was fantastic. And I guess it really inspired me to invite you onto the show today because you did such an amazing job of helping people plan the content and the episode that we're recording right now is going out you know in that time of year when everyone's starting to think towards next year and planning so thank you for coming on the show because I really appreciate it I think it's going to be a really good um, show for my audience. Thanks for having me and it's one of my favourite topics to talk about I could talk about this over and over again (laughs) and also because you know from my repurposing angle as well I just I love the fact that you um, embrace repurposing pretty much just as much as me and you were always looking for the extra kind of angles with the content that you create Um, so I guess you know the the first question I wanted to ask you is um, why is it so important that people should plan their content in advance Okay, so oh, there's so many reasons why it's a good idea, but actually, I ought to remind right, and 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 kind of give you the backstory actually to why I'm so like passionate about content and content planning, and it's probably not the reasons that you you think. So so I'm really um, prolific. I publish loads of content, and people often call me out as being who's somebody who's like insanely productive. Like I've done 320 odd podcast episodes, hundreds of blog posts, like loads of social media. I'm like always out there, like putting content out there and I'm really consistent as well however I am probably one of the most disorganized people going I find it really really difficult to stick to schedules like when I was a kid at school I did my homework right at the last minute I would always kind of like I don't know I was quite untidy quite disorganized remember my teachers like commenting on the fact that I I was disorganized all the time and so the fact that I went on to be I was a school teacher to start off with at first then I went into journalism where you obviously have to be very organized and attention to detail is really important and so so you might kind of wonder well how how did I manage to do all of that while you know while self-confessing to be disorganized but it's actually because I developed like systems and processes to help me to be more organized and to help me be consistent and so I guess I've got a bit sort of like passionate about about sharing that with other people because I think lots of entrepreneurs and creative people that I come across that we all have the same problem that we're all kind of full of ideas and that we've got so much going on and we get really distracted and we get that kind of shiny object syndrome so actually when it comes to something like you know showing up every week and publishing a podcast episode or publishing a weekly blog or you know being consistent on social media it can be kind of really really hard but actually it's just so important because that's how you build trust so you know Anybody can put out a blog post every like few weeks or few months or whatever. But actually, what helps you build an audience? And that's something I'm also really, really passionate about. Because if you, if you want to be able to like make sales online and run the kind of business that I do, you, you need to have an audience. And the only way that you can build an audience is to publish high quality, well, we can pay for it, I guess, for advertising, but you publish high quality content you do it consistently and you show up regularly so people they, they, they start to trust you and they start to see you as a dependable reliable source for information on whatever topic it is and so if you're not planning your content if you're just kind of showing up every now and again and publishing 
a blog post or a podcast episode, you're never ever going to build that that kind of dependability, that reliability that really helps you make a connection online. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, and no, I completely agree with you. And it's not just about you know like you were saying if you just occasionally turn up sometimes and put some content out there when you have the time and you don't have a plan behind it then um does that content even directly relate to what's going on in your business right now and um where's the sort of the funnel that leads to the whole purpose of the content which is to build the audience to ultimately hopefully go on and become you know lead and sales so yeah it's it's it can't be haphazard, can it? But I love the no. fact that you're saying that, you know, to to any to me, you seem like the most organized person ever. <laughs> but it just goes <laughs> to show, like you said, that what you've done is you've created all of the the systems and everything to to be as organized as possible with your content, despite what you're saying about actually, you know, you aren't as organized as you'd like to be, but you've made you've overcome that basically with your your systems and processes. Okay, so at your event last week, you had this really great four-step process for planning out your content. Would you mind just taking us through what those four steps are, please? Yeah, sure. So so I love like to to encourage my clients to think about themselves almost as like a the editor of a magazine. So rather than thinking about about producing individual bits of content, but almost see themselves as if they've got their own. I think Gary Vee talks about, you know, you should be like the publisher of your own media house or something like that. Doesn't yeah, it? every business sort of, is a media company, he says, doesn't he? Yeah, <laughs> that kind of thing. Yeah, so completely wrong quote. But it's that kind of idea. And the thing that I picked up from my time in journalism is, is that as a journalist, I would never publish anything without having a reason for publishing it so the question you'd always be asking yourself as a journalist is like why do people need to hear about this now so why is it timely why is it relevant so I really encourage my clients anyone I work with to kind of transfer that over to their content planning that's another really good reason why you should be you know really paying attention to content planning because it needs to be timely and relevant to your audience and after all what's the point of creating content I mean ultimately like we said earlier we're, we're all in the business of selling our products and services and so if we're not creating content that's really aligned to that, then kind of what's what's the point of us doing it? So, yeah, I encourage people to go through a, a four step process. So the first part of it, and I often give the sort of analogy of, of being like a, a videographer and taking like a wide shot. So the very first thing I ask people to do is to just literally plot out what they're going to be doing in each quarter. So Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4. So I'm going to put you on the spot now, Amy. <laughs> so uh, what are three or four key things that you're going to be doing in your business in, in Q1 of 2019? So um, I will be hopefully coming up to my book launch. So that will potentially be at the end of Q1, uh, uh, likely March time, I'll be launching my book. So I think that's probably going to be the biggest thing for Q1. Are you going to be like, in, attending any events or conferences or speaking anywhere? That's all coming up more. Oh, yes, actually, likely I'm going to be at uh, a podcasting event in mm. March. Yeah. So there'll be that as well. <laughs> yeah. And I know you've got a speaking gig in, I think it'll be Q4, isn't it? You've got a speaking gigs. So we're both speaking at the same event, I think, in Q4. I don't know if we're allowed to say what it is yet. If it's been <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do, actually. And another big um, thing for me next year is going to be um, – at podcast movement in Q3, I will be yeah. at the expo hall having a booth and hopefully speaking there, fingers crossed. Um, so I've got that as well. So did, you, did you say all of them or did you say Q1? <laughs> yeah, so I mean, I used to say Q1, but yeah. The- I think you, if you remember, when you were at my event, Content Live, I, I asked everyone in the room to write down just three or four key things that were happening in their business. It could be launches, it could be events they were speaking at, it could be like uh, things they were exhibiting at, like you've mentioned. And a lot of people said that they struggled, like, like they couldn't think of three or four things that they were doing in each quarter. And you might remember that I said to them, if if you're struggling with your content strategy, and you can't think of like what you're doing in each quarter, (laughs) then the problem probably isn't your content planning. It's actually your business strategy. Because if you don't know what you're going to be selling and you don't know what products or services you're going to be promoting, you don't know when you're going to be doing it, then then clearly there's something going wrong with your business strategy. So that's why I really encourage people just to stop and think, okay, what what am I actually doing in my business? Because, you know, if you're going to be speaking at a particular event, you're probably going to want to create some content around that, you know, key one for you, Amy, if you're going to be launching a book in 2019, then in the month or two leading up to that launch, you're going to be thinking about, I presume, 
episodes that kind of link to that and, and allow you to talk about that, um, maybe creating some blog content around that. So so the more that you can think and plan ahead about what's going on in your own business, then the better your content planning is going to be and, and the more aligned it's going to be to your sales funnel and actually helping you to, to make sales. So that's the first thing that I encourage people to do. But as I say, people often get tripped up on the first thing, you know, because they, they actually haven't thought about what they're going to be selling, like what products or services are going to be selling, when they're going to be selling them. The other thing that came up actually in that session is that some people say, well, what if I change my mind? Like, what, what if I, you know, I think I'm going to be selling this or I think I'm going to be at this event. Well, that's fine. You can tweak it. But if you're not starting the year actually with a good idea about what are going to, you're going to be your key focuses, then you're going to really struggle to come up with content ideas. So so that's the very first step. Really easy peasy. The other thing I would do is you can use something like my media diary to actually look at, you know, are there any key dates for awareness days that you can used to build content around so really really obvious things like q1 obviously you've got things like you know the, the kind of back to work blues the january blues blue monday things like that you've got valentine's day depending on what kind of industry you're in um, march you've got st patrick's day so you've got obvious things but also in my media diary we've got those like really fun things like national donuts <laughs> and if any of these things apply to your business and you'd be amazed actually how many of them do i mean one of my clients actually uh, who had my diary last year she managed to create a whole series of really nice content around national hedge hog day because like, she does children's she's got a, like a parenting blog and she was able to do like children's book reviews about hedgehogs and hedgehog cakes and things like that so so actually you know it's thinking about what's happening in your business but then thinking what's happening in the wider world like one of my clients that we spoke about the event debbie humphreys her business is red hound for dogs she makes like dog coats and so for her just having on her diary that Crofts is coming up in March so she could be thinking about is there any content that she could create about that if you're a tennis coach you know you might want to think you know Wimbledon if you're um, uh, a stylist you might be thinking about London Fashion Week or New York Fashion Week so just kind of getting those key dates which are you know key to you as a business that's the priority for me and then secondary what's going on in the world what's happening what are people going to be talking about so that literally you can do that in like 15-20 minutes or something and you've got I mean not even that to be honest um, you've got your whole year plotted out so then using the kind of sorry go on Amy uh, oh no I was just going to say that you know you can there's so much you can create in advance as well isn't there because um we nearly missed national podcast day um last uh, I think it was a few I think it was like last month and uh, you know as a podcaster but also very much because we serve the podcast industry with you know we have clients who are podcasters and um I try and help people who have podcasts to repurpose so it was kind of it just suddenly hit us and so we've quickly you know created some content to acknowledge it and have a little bit of fun but now you know with the help of your media diary we had a meeting this morning where we were saying we could have got so far ahead with that and this week as we're talking now it's going to be thanksgiving um later this week we have a lot of clients you know in the us and people listening right now in the us and you know we we were like oh let's create some fun to say happy thanksgiving but next year because of you know thinking ahead like you said with awareness days and things like that we're going to look right now and flag the awareness days and things like that that we think would be um fun or right for us to acknowledge and even just start creating that content really far in advance as well because that's not um you know that that's just going to be standalone kind of fun different content so even now we can be creating some yeah. of that so that's what i exactly. really love about that mm. yeah exactly so Things like Black Friday or even Christmas, it sounds silly, but often we get so busy in our businesses that we forget about Christmas. Yeah, <laughs> and, I know. Um, so, so you're so busy. And so so I created some um, some blog content, some podcast content about how to how to get your business ready for Black Friday and, you know, or, or not as the case might be. Some people, you know, don't, don't like to go there. Mm. But I was only able to do that because I diarise across the year. And, you know, it's no good me putting an episode out like today on Black Friday. It's not going to be very no. useful for somebody. So I put that episode out last month so that people had time to actually take the content and then and then do something with it. You know, it's no good me um, publishing um, a blog post on how to create Christmas content for your blog, like in, you know, December the 23rd. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so this, like you say, this allows you to like create the content like months and months in advance mm. if you want to really organized which is which is really really great so so once you've got that that side of it done the the annual side and you've got that kind of like I say it's almost like a wide shot if you're a videographer then I sort of suggest that you zoom in a little bit and I suggest people take it in 90 day chunks like my attention span I, I can't really think beyond 90 days and basically what what I, I encourage people to do is just to think about the questions that you're customers ask you like not only specifically relating to your products or services but 
just sort of generally to do with the area that you work in. So the example that I gave at my live event content live, I've got this client, Debbie, who has red hand for dogs. She makes dog coats. It's kind of really nice, kind of memorable example. So she got basically for free, she got all her blog posts panned out for her Mm because I used her as a a case study um but just thinking about you know for example in january she specializes in whippets um so there'll be lots of people who've got new whippets for christmas and so um you know what 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 equipment or things i need to buy for my new whippet that could be a blog post um how do i train my new whippet how do i what um snacks do i feed my whippet or whatever so we've got three blog posts there already um in in february she might be thinking about you know if you put your first uh, you've got a whippet for the first time, you know, can I take the dog on holiday with me? Um, it's, there's crufts on the, in March and, and Debbie, I know she sometimes creates some content around that. So, you know, should I attend crufts, crufts, yes or no, that kind of thing. So just sort of thinking about like, but you know, what, what's going to be, what's going to be timely and relevant for your, for your customers? What are they having problems with basically? What, what are they finding challenging or difficult? Some of that might be, I always like to divide my content into two types of content. So, so, some of it is much more generic. So, for example, with my media diary, I create a series of blog posts which are kind of very generic. So they might be like how to create a media calendar for your business and why you need to do it or how to create a content calendar for your business. That's kind of generic stuff that's kind of very general. It's not relating to my diary or any of my products or services. But then I also create very specific blog posts or podcast episodes which are, you know, how to make the best of your media diary, how to, how to you know, make the most effective use of it. Uh, what's the difference between the media diary and the media diary owners club, which is a membership that I've set up? Um, six common concerns people have about the media diary, like 10 compelling reasons to buy the media diary. So two types of content, one that's much more generic and the well, other which is much more focused on your products and services. And it was interesting, again, at the event, so Again, I, I first asked people like, okay, do you think you can come up with 15 questions that your customers ask you about your products and services? And everybody looked very doubtful. <laughs> and then I think I dragged my event manager up and said like, okay, what 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 questions do we get asked about this event? And she said, oh, you know, can you give me directions to the event? Is there somewhere I can store my suitcase? Do I need to bring a laptop? Uh, can I have a vegan lunch? And, and we just went through and off the top of her head, like she came up with like tons of, of blog posts. So I would suggest that you you just sort of think about each month or each quarter or each season and think, okay, what, what are my customers or clients going to be really concerned with at t- that time of year? And like you said, I think International Podcast Day is like September the 30th. Is that right? Yeah, I that's it. it. Yeah. So, you know, just sort of thinking about that and making sure that you're when you're planning that you're thinking, well, I need to, you know, I don't want to put that out on the day. If there's any prep involved, maybe I might need to publish that a month earlier or two months earlier or whatever. Um, so so with that sort of list of potential questions, you know, you, 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 I mean, I would probably do it in 90 day chunks, but, you know, come up with 12 or 13 ideas for the first quarter, another 12 or 13 ideas for Q2, Q3, Q4. And then, you know, before you know it, you've got like the best part of 60 blog post ideas or podcast videos, whatever you you, you want to start with. And I would also suggest, I know you'll be keen on this idea, Amy, (laughs) um that you that you try that you try not to do more than one piece of content a week. So you try and think about one sort of cornerstone piece of content a week. So, you know, uh what 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 equipment should I buy for my new whip it? And instead of trying to create lots of pieces of content, you think, okay, well I'm gonna create start with a video, then maybe strip out the audio and turn that into a podcast, then take the transcript and turn that into a blog post, then pull out some of the key killer quotes and get those made up into use Canva or something to make some nice quote cards. Cards. then maybe you could turn it into a slideshow presentation or you could take some of the audio and, t- and make little podcast teasers um you could maybe record like that uh, you, you've started doing this amy recently haven't you like recording little video trailers yeah. and talking about it so it's basically taking that one piece of content in the live event that you spoke at recently i showed how you could take one piece of content and turn it into 12 pieces of content which then leads us nicely into our weekly planning because if you're creating that one cornerstone piece of content a week you don't really need to worry about your weekly planning too much because you've already got potentially 12 pieces of content for that week. And then it's just about working out, well, what are you going to post on on what day? Um, I recycle a lot of my content. So if I create a post for LinkedIn that's relating to one of my blog posts, I might actually just take that that post and tweak it slightly and post it on Facebook, on Facebook page. And a few, few days later, I might post it on my Instagram account. And so it's not about reinventing the wheel the whole time. I mean, sometimes, some days I even put out the, the, pretty much exactly the same post and I just tweak it for the, the platform. But it's, yeah. it's, a, so it's about trying to be as efficient as possible. Um, and then think, when, sorry, go on. I was going to say, and I think when you're planning out that initial 
core piece of content, the first, as you said, kind of the first cornerstone that the rest then um, kind of gets repurposed from. It's important to think of that as the, the the meatier piece of content that's on your own kind of land, so to speak, isn't it? That's the piece of content that's on your website or, um, you know, if, it, if it's a podcast episode, yes, it's going to be on places like iTunes, but it's on your website and the show notes yeah. is on your website. The video is on your website. It's I always think when you're planning that initial piece, don't think the initial piece will be a great article on LinkedIn or a really good Facebook post. It's the it's the meteor content on your own land, isn't it? On your own website that you want to start off with if you can. Ideally, that's what you want to do because it's all about getting people to your site, isn't it? And the links back to your site, all those little sprinkles of content that we send out there. We want people to want more and go to your website, don't we? Yeah, exactly. And as I, I will be looking to create a multimedia rich experience. So, you know, that one cornerstone piece of content, can it have video? Can it have graphics? Can it have audio? Like, And, and I know, you know, like all of us, I need to improve on all of, this, all of this stuff, but it just makes life so much easier if you can create that kind of one cornerstone piece of content rather than trying to, like I say, it's thinking about your content as a, as a magazine with lots of different yeah. sections, if you like, rather than trying to think of them with lots of individual piece of content and when you do that when it comes to your daily planning you don't really have to think too much about it because you've already done it and if you've created one piece of content a week that's timely that's relevant and and you know it's going to interest your audience at that time and you've turned it into lots of smaller pieces of content it's just a case then of kind of deciding what you want to publish when and what's going to work best for your audience and then you might want to throw in some of the awareness days and key dates you know from a resource like the media diary I just want to put some fun content in I don't know if it's national chocolate day or something you might decide you want to do a few fun posts on that mm-hmm. or if I don't know it's a royal wedding or or something I mean also I think it's good to have um, room for spontaneity as well so I remember Amy you you sent me a message um after the after Harry and Meghan after they announced their pregnancy uh, you sent me a message and said don't you think it's interesting that Harry and Meghan announced their pregnancy on it was it was baby loss awareness week or baby loss oh, awareness yeah. day yeah um, and I turned that into a piece of content for my Facebook page. I basically just posted up and said, because yeah, you kind of joked to me, oh, well, you know, maybe that wouldn't have happened if their press people had, had oh, actually the media diary. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but but I, I turned that into a piece of content where I just said to people, look, you know, do, do you think that this was bad taste or do you think actually... And, and I gave some options, you know, yes, I think it's bad taste. B, actually, that there's never any time to, to, to announce that kind of news. There'll always be somebody who will find it, you know, upsetting. And and it got a really good debate going on my Facebook page, like really, really good engagement. So I think it's also important just to, to kind of leave that little bit of room for spontaneity. But that's the, the cool thing about planning, because if you've planned your content ahead, you know you've got your cornerstone piece of content going out every week you've got your sort of systems and processes in place so that you know what day you're going to be publishing like what time what you know I know what what different pieces of content I'm going to be creating out of my one you know I do two podcasts a week at the moment dropping down to one next year but I know like exactly what piece of content are going to be created from that key piece of content so it's just a matter of kind of replicating that every week and that frees you up the time and also the mental energy just to kind of go, oh, that looks fun. That will get engagement and it actually frees you up to be a bit more creative, if you see what I mean. Yeah, yeah, definitely. OK, so there's loads of obviously great reasons why you should be following a plan and then repurposing your content, allowing a little bit of room for ad hoc content. Um, are there, can you tell me any um mistakes that you've seen people make when they haven't had any kind of content plan at all any any of your clients or members that maybe have made a mistake with this yeah I mean I think the thing about the content plan we talked about this before really is that that people kind of um they they get to kind of know you they get to depend on you and you know I find that my my clients or not my clients my podcast listeners if I I think it hardly ever has, but you know, people will actually email you and say, well, where is it? Where is it? I was just about to walk my dog and like, I wanted your latest podcast. Where is it? And yeah. that's really what you're t- trying to create. Actually, I'd say the biggest mistake I see sometimes is, is, is people who, who almost plan too much, which sounds a bit contra- counterintuitive. No, I thought you were going to say said. that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I think there's like, I, I think there's three types of marketers and I often talk about this in my content. So like, so first of all, there's that the, the on diary marketer. So this is the kind of person who has everything mapped out, like, 
like they have a strict schedule and they, they you know, they, they always stick to it and they, they do everything like months in advance. And that's really great. And those kind of people tend to get on really well with my media diary because they can like plan their content like months, months ahead. But the danger with being that kind of marketer and on diary marketer is that your content's boring and stale and they'll just put stuff out and they'll schedule it. Like they use things like, um, uh, what do I use for my, for my scheduling now? Um, oh, I know buffer, sweet, whatever. And, and, and smart acute I'm using at the moment and, and their content's really boring and no one ever engages with it, but they don't really care because they've, done it and it's off the to-do list so you know and for me that's just a complete waste of time like creating content just putting it out on an auto scheduler putting it on facebook when i'm looking somebody up like say i'm looking to get someone to speak at an event of mine or if i'm um wanting to work with them if i go to their facebook page their instagram page and they never get any comments or interaction I- i'm going to make make a judgment about them and think well they're probably not very interesting and not very busy because nobody seems to want to talk to them um, so that's yeah. the on derby marketer. Lots of good qualities, but some bad qualities as well. Um, the on the go marketer, like this is kind of my favourite type of marketing, and this is me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I can literally, like, I might be walking down the road, and like, I'll see a road sign or something, or I'll see a, a shop front or something. I think, oh wow, and I'll just take a picture of it. And I've done things like, I mean, I was in the hairdressers having my hair done one day, and there were dogs in the hairdressers, and I was like, oh, I'm not really sure about this. I'm not sure. I don't like dogs that much and like, I'm not really sure this is a good idea and I literally just from my chair in the hairdressers I posted um in this swanky hairdressers in Shoreditch in East London uh it's got dogs running around the place what do you think should dogs be allowed in hairdressers or not I knew it was divisive I knew some people would love it some people hated it I didn't even include a photo but you know I could have included some photos and videos of these dogs and by the time I left the hair salon half an hour later I had like hundreds of comments on my Facebook really? page um so that kind of content can be really fun like when you you just you just see something you think it's interesting there's an interesting story behind it you can get a bit of a, a debate going so that my favorite type of marketing and I think you often get the best engagement however the downside if you're primarily an on-the-go marketer like I am is that uh, sometimes you can get so engrossed in doing that kind of thing <laughs> that you get behind on your own stuff and you're like then ch- you know chasing your tail trying to kind of like you know get on top of it so again the media diary can really help with that because you know it kind of keeps you on task when you've got your plan done the third type of marketer is the most dangerous type of marketer and these are like on the to-do list marketers so these are the people who like read all the blog posts who like listen to all the podcasts watch all the youtube channels but they never actually create any content and they buy things like the media diary they buy i've just created this like um online toolkit uh for entrepreneurs and creatives called 2019 sorted and I actually repurposed the content from my live event and turn that into this online toolkit but i i should imagine there will be some people who buy that who watch it all who consume it all and are kind of like walking around giving everybody else advice on how to create a great content plan and create theirs but never actually do it <laughs> so i think yeah. the thing is like remember you at school and you see like a, a revision timetable for your exams and like it used to look really nice. I don't know if you did this any. So I suspect you probably didn't. But sometimes I used to like make really nice revision timetables and, and like they look really pretty, but never actually did any of the revision on them. I used to do that. I used to make the a really amazing, like nicely coloured in schedule and an amazing space, like in the room, all tidy and you know perfect. But didn't actually, you know, I spent so much time planning doing it, but like you know, yeah, you know, yeah. Then, you know didn't actually do the revision <laughs> yeah. so I know exactly so what you mean the, that's the key thing but I think there's a, a danger if you get too tied into your content schedule that you can be boring and you can be stale and you know for me there's no use putting content out there unless it's timely it's engaging and you're also working crucially on getting engagement I see some fantastic content being shared like and I can see this as a fantastic podcast episode or a Facebook you know uh, I don't know blog post whatever it might be but nobody's commenting no one's engaging no one's getting involved and I, I just I just think you've got to work on that side of it as well you can't just kind of make the plan create the content and leave it you've got then got to go out and get eyes on this content and, and that can be really challenging yeah and I guess through, through the, the year as you're planning out your content you're looking back at um, your analytics aren't you and you're looking at like you said the reactions the responses and not being too rigid with your plan yeah. but at least well as you said from the very start knowing what you're doing with your business and making sure that the content has a link building in the ad hoc and the fun aspects too to get great engagement and build you as a personality and you know in your audience as well it so it all comes together in the end doesn't it but you have to be looking at the responses and the reactions yeah and I think a big thing for 2019 is going to be I mean obviously planning is really important one 
you know, cornerstone piece of content a week, that would be my advice and turn that into lots of other smaller pieces of content. But I think behind the scenes content is going to be big as well. And you can just do that kind of thing on Instagram stories and you can even repeat purpose your Instagram stories, can't you, if you save them and yeah. you can do other things with them. Um, but I think people just love being nosy, don't they? They love seeing behind the scenes. I was thinking earlier on, actually, so when we were at my event, Content Live last week, do you remember that? I'm going to be purpose the backdrop. You're going to love this, Amy, right? So, <laughs> so yeah. remember we created that backdrop to yeah. take photos. Yeah. yeah, so the black and white. So we've Brilliant. got some wallpaper. We've got some wallpaper left over, right? From so we're going to repurpose the backdrop. That we uh-huh, created. And we're going to actually wallpaper my wall with it. So we're going to recreate. We're going to repurpose mm-hmm. the the backdrop from my live event and actually put it up on my wall. That's brilliant. <laughs> so that's taking repurposing to its fullest fullest extent, really, isn't it? Yeah, I love it. <laughs> so for you, um, what next year in terms of your core? Um, cornerstone piece I know you've started to do vlogging now haven't you obviously you've got your podcast you said you're moving to weekly you do a lot of blogging so what what's your core main cornerstone weekly piece of content well one thing I'm still trying to figure out actually Amy and you might be able to help me with this <laughs> we were just talking about this before we got on the call is I mean I, I want to start with video I feel like that's the most important thing but at the moment my my biggest audience is probably from my podcast and we were just talking about it before we got on this call how sometimes it's just the the, the audio quality on podcasts which is so important isn't it and yeah. when you record something as a video interview you don't get the same quality of audio so I'm investigating how I might be able to say for example with my video with my podcast interviews like record those as videos so that I can repurpose them and put them on YouTube whatever and I'm also going to think about how I can um, I, I've been doing these little behind the scenes vlogs this year and they're really great and they're really good fun but I've been editing them myself and it's been taking me quite a long time and it's been fun so I need to outsource that but I'd like to see how I can I can tie them into my cornerstone content so can I actually theme them more effectively so that they fit in better with my cornerstone content and you know become part of that but you know still haven't kind of worked out how how that's all going to fit together because this is like totally a work in progress but for me and I'd say this for anybody is like it's it's identifying that the sort of type of content that's getting you the most engagement so for me it's my podcast like that's where I get most of my engagement so it feels like that's where I need to start but I want to add a video element to it so so you know I may well look to to start with uh, video podcast and, and start with that or maybe we'll look to think well you know could could I recall when I'm interviewing my podcast guest could maybe I just record a section of it or do like a Q&A section or something like that that we also put out on video but for me it's going to be like about less is more for 2019 and thinking about how I can take um take my you know best performing piece of content as well we've just started using Pinterest um to drive traffic to my website I mean we were using it before but we weren't using it really strategically and even in just like 30 days the engagement has gone up just dramatically um so we're going to be looking about how we can take my best performing pieces of content i've already got rather than creating new ones all the time um, and actually really optimize those using pinterest and go back to old blog posts and podcast episodes that i've done really well um, and also look at how we can make those richer multimedia experiences and also we purpose i've got some podcast episodes and there was one that you mentioned to me in particular i've got one on how to write a, a sales page and i feel that could be repurposed into a little mini course so so for me next year is, is going to be very much about not not creating as much new content but thinking how i can make the content i've already got a much richer experience for people so you know turning podcasts into blog posts and adding video elements and audio and you know more images and that kind of thing um rather than constantly trying to create new stuff yeah making more with what you, you've got that sounds yeah. really good great okay <laughs> well thank you so much for coming on the show janet we could just carry on talking couldn't we but um but um I should I should wrap up, but firstly, I guess just a few questions. So we've mentioned a couple of times your media diary. Where can people go if they want to get a copy of your media diary? So my media diary is available at my shop on my website. So it's okay. janetmurray.co.uk slash shop. So janetmurray.co.uk slash shop. You can also get my media diary owners club. So it's a little membership that I've created to support support people because what we found was happening initially was that people would join by the media diary and then they were like needed a bit of support using it and and sort of helped to make sure that they stayed on task we created a a little membership around that I've also got this I've repurposed the content of my recent live event content live we turned it into an online planning toolkit for entrepreneurs and creatives it's specifically created for people who like me find planning difficult and find it difficult to kind of like stay on task Um, and you can get that at janetmurraymembers.com 
2019 slash 2019 sorted. So it's janetmurraymembers.com slash 2019 sorted. Cool. Well, I'll put the links in the show notes for that and also um, for all of your social media profiles and everywhere else that people can connect with you as well. Um, so, so great. Well, thanks, Janet. That was really, really useful. A good kind of end of year session for helping people plan the content. So thank you so much. Um, it's been great having you on the show. And you know, you're the only person who's been on twice now. <laughs> so, <that's amazing. laughs> so thanks so much for coming on. Oh, thanks so much for having me. I feel very privileged to be on tour. <laughs>